Today's demonstration on lungs. Whenever we are discussing about any organ, we have to keep it in anatomical position first. So, this is the anatomical position of left lung and this is anatomical position of right lung. What does it mean? You have to keep the base. Actually, this is base. Base on your palm and this is sharpest anterior border. This sharpest anterior border should be directed forwards and medially. Here, this is blunt posterior border. Blunt posterior border should be directed backwards and this is apex. This apex should be directed upwards. Base should be directed downwards. And costal surface laterally, medial surface medially. So, if you keep lung in this position, this is anatomical position. If you take the left side, this is anatomical position. So, sharp anterior border anteriorly, blunt posterior border posteriorly, base below and costal surface laterally, medial surface medially. Apex above. Is it? So, if you keep lung in this position, this is anatomical position. Then, what are the presenting features of lung? It is having apex, this is apex, this is base, this is anterior border and this is posterior border, this is medial surface, this is costal surface. So, these are the presenting parts. Recollect apex, base, medial surface, costal surface, anterior border, posterior border and inferior border. So, this is inferior border. This is also sharp. So, these are the presenting parts. We have to discuss one by one. This is apex. Apex is directed upwards 2.5 centimeters above the medial one third of the clavicle. That means in the anterior part, it is going beyond the thoracic base. But if you observe in the posterior aspect, it will not extend beyond the neck of the first rib. Then what are the relations of it? See here, this is the first rib impression. This is first rib impression. And here you can form the subclavian vessels impression. And over the apex, what structures will be present? Of course, apex will be covered by cervical pleura and over the cervical pleura there will be membrane. That membrane what we are calling suprapleural membrane or Simpson's fascia. This suprapleural membrane is morphological remnant of scalenus minimus. And this is about the apex. Then base. See, this is base. Base is resting over the diaphragm. Both lungs. These lungs are resting over the diaphragm. If you see the relations of base of right lung, it is resting over the right dome of diaphragm. Below the right dome of diaphragm, what will be there? Right lobe of liver will be present. Then, if you see left side, base of the left lung resting over the left dome of diaphragm and that left dome will be separating the left lung with the left lobe of liver, fundus of stomach and spleen. So, these are the relations for the base. Then, coming to the costal surface. What is the surface? This surface is costal surface. This costal surface is separating from the medial surface anteriorly by anterior border, posteriorly by blunt posterior border. Right? So, this surface is costal surface. This costal surface having some rib impressions. See here, these are the impressions of ribs and these elevations are because of intercostal space. So, by seeing that, we can identify that this is costal surface. This costal surface is covered by costal pleura. Over that, we can form the chest wall. That's it. Those are the relations. Then, this is what medial surface. This surface what we are calling medial surface. Medial surface further divided into mediastinal surface. This surface is what we are calling mediastinal surface. Actually, mediastinum is nothing but space between the two lungs, what we are calling mediastinum. Right? So, this space, what we are calling mediastinum. And uh, area of the lung, which is in relation with the mediastinum, this surface, what we are calling mediastinal surface. And this surface, what we are calling vertebral surface. Of course, it is medial surface only. Medial surface divided into vertebral surface and mediastinal surface. This vertebral surface in relation with the bodies of vertebra, intervertebral discs, splanchnic nerves, and posterior intercostal vessels. These are the relations for the vertebral surface. Recollect bodies of vertebrae, intervertebral discs, posterior intercostal vessels, and 
splanchnic nerves that is about vertebral surface then coming to the mediastinal surface here mediastinal surface relations are different from right lung to left lung when you are discussing about the mediastinal surface you have to discuss about the hilum also see this is the hilum hilum is nothing but triangular non pleural area which is present in the mediastinal surface of the lung what we are calling hilum why i am telling it is a non pleural because see lungs covered by pleura layer of the pleura which is intimately covering is visceral pleura when it is reaches to the root what is root root is nothing but the pedicles are the structures which are entering and leaving the lung covered by parietal pleura that structure what we are calling root imagine these are all structures which are entering and leaving covered by parietal pleura so this total structure what we are calling root so visceral pleura when it reaches to the lateral end of the root it is not covering the hilum it is reflected as parietal pleura and encircling the root that's what this area is non pleural this area is not covered by pleura hilum is nothing but triangular non pleural area which is present in the mediastinal surface of lung what we call hilum right so this is hilum now we will see what are the structures entering and leaving the hilum if you see hilar structures from above downwards what will be there in case of left side actually this is blood clot in case of left side this is pulmonary artery then bronchus then inferior pulmonary vein then if you see from anterior to posterior side superior pulmonary vein pulmonary artery and bronchus so what are the structures which are present in the hilum in case of left side pulmonary artery principal bronchus and inferior pulmonary vein and also superior pulmonary vein right so these are the structures which are present in along with that if you observe posterior most part we can found the here cut sections of bronchial vessels in case of left side two bronchial arteries and two bronchial veins will be present in case of right side only one bronchial artery and two bronchial veins will be present see the hilar structures once again pulmonary artery principal bronchus superior pulmonary vein inferior pulmonary vein if you tell structures from above downwards pulmonary artery principal bronchus inferior pulmonary vein then if you see from anterior to posterior side superior pulmonary vein pulmonary artery bronchus that means principal bronchus right then along with that you can found the bronchial vessels right then if you see the difference between the hilar structures of left lung and right lung see here this is bronchus this bronchus is epiarterial bronchus what we call this epiarterial ap means above above the artery this is artery this artery is pulmonary artery above the artery epiarterial bronchus below this artery this is artery below this artery here one bronchus is there this bronchus what we are calling hypoarterial bronchus this is epiarterial bronchus this is hypoarterial bronchus then in between artery then below that inferior pulmonary vein in front superior pulmonary vein so here one bronchus is extra what is that hypoarterial bronchus is below epiarterial bronchus is above but in case of left side only one bronchus is there in case of right side epiarterial bronchus hypoarterial bronchus pulmonary artery superior pulmonary vein and inferior pulmonary vein if you observe bronchial vessels in case of left side two bronchial arteries in case of right side only one bronchial artery two bronchial veins right bronchial artery is branched from the third posterior intercostal artery but the left bronchial arteries are the direct branches from the aorta bronchial veins two in number right bronchial veins opens into ajegas vein left bronchial veins opens into hemiajegas vein along with these hilar structures anterior and posterior pulmonary plexus lymphatics also will pass through the hilum and we can found few bronchopulmonary lymph nodes also in the hilum right so these are the structures which are present in the hilum in the lower part of the hilum we can observe pulmonary ligament pulmonary ligament is formed by parietal layer of pleura parietal layer of pleura after winding around or after surrounding the root of the lung which extends downwards beyond the root as a fold that fold what we are calling pulmonary ligament this pulmonary ligament contains loose area tissue and few lymphatics it provides the dead space for the inferior pulmonary vein during exercise venous return will be more that time inferior pulmonary vein 
extend into the dead space. That means it will be extending into the pulmonary ligament. Lung root also can descend into it along with descent of diaphragm. Now we will see what are the impressions which are present in the mediastinal surface of right lung and mediastinal surface of left lung. First if you take the mediastinal surface of right lung. This is mediastinal surface of right lung. Here cardiac impression. This is what cardiac impression. In this impression what will be related? Right auricle, right atrium and small portion of right ventricle also. For the cardiac impression relations are right auricle, right atrium, right ventricle. Then, here you can see one impression. This impression is superior vena cava impression and here right brachiocephalic venous impression. This is superior vena cava impression. This is right brachiocephalic vein impression. Right? Then, just behind the right brachiocephalic vein, you can found the brachiocephalic trunk also. Brachiocephalic trunk. So, cardiac impression, superior vena cava impression right brachiocephalic vein impression, brachiocephalic trunk impression. Then if you see below, at this spot, you can see inferior vena caval impression. Here, inferior vena caval impression. If you observe above the root or above the hilum, you can see one impression here, arch shaped impression. See, it is arch. This arch shaped impression is because of arch of ajaygas. So, here ajaygas vein impression. This impression is Ajayga's vein impression. Then, just behind the brachiocephalic trunk impression, you can see tracheal impression, esophageal impression, and vagus nerve impression. There will be nerve and blood vessels that are passing in front of the root or in front of the hilum, like this. These structures are phrenic nerve and pericardiac phrenic vessels. Phrenic nerve and pericardiac phrenic vessels are passing like this. That means they are present on either side of the pericardium. That's what those impressions we can see here. Clear? So, these are the different relations which I recollect once again. Superior vena cava impression, brachiocephalic vein, brachiocephalic trunk, cardiac impression related with right atrium, right auricle, and right ventricle. Here, inferior vena cava impression. Then, here, arch of Ajayga's vein impression. Then, Tracheal impression, esophageal impression, then vagus nerve impression. Along with that, in between the pericardium and the cardiac impression of lung, in front of the root of the lung or in front of the hilum of lung, there will be structures passing like this. These are phrenic nerve and pericardiac phrenic vessels. These are the impressions of mediastinal surface of lung. Mediastinal surface of lung is very important for mass question. If they ask total lung, that is S shape, if they wanted to ask only five marks from the lung, almost they lost mediastinal surface of lung only. So, that is about the mediastinal surface of right lung. Then, if you take mediastinal surface of left lung, see, this is cardiac impression. Cardiac impression is for what? Heart. It is related with left auricle, left ventricle and part of the right ventricle also, since it is present like this. Left auricle left ventricle and part of the right ventricle also. Here, this area is related with the heart. So, this is cardiac impression. Then, what will be the other impressions which are present here? This is arch of iota. This is the arch of iota and here descending iota. Arch of iota, descending iota. After cardiac impressions, I am showing arch of aortic impression and descending iota impression. Just below the arch of iota, here this impression, here this area, pulmonary trunk impression. This is pulmonary trunk. Right? Then here one more impression which is going up. That is left subclavian artery impression. This is left subclavian artery impression. Then behind that, behind what you can found, esophagus, thoracic duct, vagus nerve, and in between the trachea and esophagus, we can found the tracheoesophageal groove. In that group, we can found the nerve which is supplying to the larynx. What is that nerve? Recurrent laryngeal nerve. Along with that, as we have seen in the right side, there will be structures which are passing in between the mediastinal surface of lung and the pericardium. What are those? Phrenic nerve and pericardiac phrenic vessels. So, these structures are related with the mediastinal surface of lung. They connect.
cardiac impression related with left auricle, left ventricle and portion of right ventricle also. This is cardiac impression. Then here pulmonary trunk impression, arch of iota impression, descending iota impression, left subclavian artery impression, then esophagus, vagus, recurrent laryngeal nerve, pericardiac of phrenic vessels, phrenic nerve. Along with that, we can see left brachiocephalic vein impression also. Left brachiocephalic vein impression also we can form. Right? So, these are the relations of mediastinal surface of left lung. Then, you will see the fissures. In case of right side, there is oblique fissure and transverse fissure. So, that right lung can be divided into upper lobe, middle lobe and lower lobe. See here, this is the oblique fissure. Oblique fissure cuts the lung totally except at the hilum. See here, except at the hilum, these fissures are cutting the total lung. Why these fissures are there? To allow the uniform extension of lungs. To allow the uniform extension of lung, these fissures are present. So, this is oblique fissure. Oblique fissure cuts the posterior border 6 cm below the apex. Here it is cutting. And it cuts the inferior border 7.5 cm from the midline. So, this fissure is oblique fissure. So, this oblique fissure divides the lung into upper part and lower part. Okay. Then, this upper part further divided by transverse fissure. This transverse fissure is cutting the upper part of the lung into upper lobe and middle lobe. But if you observe in case of left side, you can see only oblique fissure. There is no transverse fissure. So, that left lung will be divided into upper lobe and lower lobe only. But in case of right side, three lobes are there. Okay. And if you see the size of it, left lung is longer and narrower. If you see the right lung, it is shorter and broader. Why it is shorter? Because right lobe of liver will be extending little up than the left lobe. That's what right lung is shorter, but it is broader. Right lung is about 700 grams, left lung is 50 to 100 grams less than the right lung. So, that is about the weight of it. These are the external features of it. Then if you go little details about the anterior border. Since it is showing the cardiac notch, this is the anterior border of right lung. But if you observe anterior border of left lung, up to the fourth costal cortex, it is extending down. From there it is deviating laterally, 3.5 cm lateral to the sternal margin and it forms a notch. This notch what we are calling cardiac notch. It is again directing downwards and medial and reaches to the sixth costal cartilage. Then you can see lingula. See here, it is a tongue like projection is there. This tongue like projection below the cardiac notch. What we are calling lingula of left lung. It is tongue like projection. Is it? This tongue like projection represents the middle lobe of right lung. So, this is about the different features of lung.